Hey everybody, welcome to Ron's Basement. We have a massive big show today. We're going to learn about a new website that'll be open to the public later this week that is set to smash a lot of the previously accepted narratives surrounding silver. Silverwars.org. And we have exclusive also access to the man behind all this. He's going to join us in just a few minutes, but it's fascinating. Let's run out and take a quick look. And then we'll talk about what's going on right now in the silver and gold markets. I had predicted yesterday that we could see a little bit of a pullback. It's been absolutely crazy, but this is what we're going to talk about uh, in just a little while, guys, silverwars.org. It's not up and running to the public just yet. We're looking at a preview here. But this uh, this site uh, is set to uh, cause some waves, I guess you could say, within the silver community. You know, there's always been uh, a bit of controversy surrounding some of the published numbers out there uh, regarding silver demand, silver supply. And uh, this website is is just incredible. You're going to love it. And like I said, we're going to talk to the man behind it here in just a few minutes. Uh, let's get back up. Let's take a look at what's going on right now. The Im real important story this morning, uh, gold is heading steady or holding steady around $2,346 per ounce. I was really shocked to see it up this morning. It was up $15, $20 at one point. But back to about even. Let's remember, let's all smile, right? It's Monday morning. It helps to smile. Let's remember that we have $2,346 gold. And when we look at silver, it's even more optimistic, $28.38 in the spot market right now, up 54 cents per ounce. What is happening in silver? Hey, I got an extra special treat for you as well when it comes to silver because we're going to talk with John Little, uh, the man behind the Silver Academy also, and talk about some interesting data, a story he put out a few days ago uh, about what's going on in mainland China. And uh, let's just say uh, the government encouraging the citizens to now invest into silver. Don't forget, there's 1.4 billion people there in mainland China. But let's go to Kitco really quickly to see what the, uh, let's hear what the big time analysts are telling us what to expect in the gold price. We know gold is the godfather of the precious metals. Gold is the godfather of the anti-fiat, anti-money printing movement, okay? Uh, gold is on top of everything. Our friend Niels over at Kiss Kitco publishes uh, that we should expect to see some consolidation this week as the gold price was unable to hold above 2400 last week. Let's just go down here and let's start here uh, talking about the Fed. According to the CME FedWatch tool, markets now only see a 27% chance of a rate cut in June. We don't need rate cuts. <laughs> we don't need rate cuts for gold to do well. We need the reality reality to sink in with more people that uh, that the dollar is going down in real value. As soon as inflation overtakes whatever the interest rate is, it doesn't matter. We're going to see massive movements in the gold price and the silver price. But that 27% chance of a rate cut in June is down from 50% last week and 68% the prior month. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go down and hear what the big analysts are telling us we should expect. We'll start with this guy. Naeem Aslam says, quote, I think the momentum is still strong, but at the same time, it's not right to be greedy. That's right, basement dwellers. We know that. We're not overly greedy. We're just moderately greedy. <laughs> and given the stellar rally that we've seen in the gold price, we think it's wise to book a, to book some profit. Okay. Let's hear what Newman, hey, Newman had to say, huh? Old Newman, Philip Newman, director and founding partner of Metals Focus, also said it might be a good idea for investors to take some profits off the table. He said the gold market is due for some consolidation after this unprecedented run into record territory. He says, quote, we don't expect to see a significant pullback, but we do think, we like that Newman, we don't want a significant pullback, but we do think a short-term correction makes sense at these levels. Guys, we got to remember, 
right? Nothing goes straight up. We've been really spoiled with the gold price and most recently with the silver price, right? Because silver had some big time catching up to do and maybe still does. Maybe, do you think that's what we're seeing today, right? Silver continuing to catch up. That that elastic band that we like to call the gold to silver ratio that had been so far stretched out the 90, 95 ounces of silver to get one ounce of gold. When, it, when that band, when that bungee cord, that rubber band, however you want to think about it, starts to contract to more reasonable levels. 70? 60? I mean, what would the silver price be right now if we had a 60 to 1 gold to silver ratio? Um, uh, like $40 per ounce, right? We're Let's just say roughly a $2,400 gold. Uh, if we had a 60 gold to silver ratio, guys, that means we would have $40 silver. It would till, till. It would till take, still take, uh, at that point, three, right, a 60 to one gold to silver ratio, three tubes of American silver eagles to get one ounce of gold. Sorry, that's, I still, I, I know I have a problem, but I, I still would, I still would opt for the silver. <laughs> I do love gold though. Okay. Let's just listen to our last one here. Ole Henson, head of commodity strategy at Saxo Bank said that although the price momentum is extreme, he's looking through the recent volatility and is focused on the broader trends driving prices. He noted that gold remains well supported in part due to rising inflation fears. Amen. Ole, ole, ole said it, right? Inflation is a big issue and growing uncertainty over the health of the global economy. I think ole just described stagflation, stagflation, the most fertile soil for silver and gold, right? Rising inflation, right? That's the fl the deflation in stagflation and a stagnant economy, right? That's the stag in stagflation. And guys, it is, <laughs> that is the promised land for silver and gold investors. And we could be heading into it. Let's finish up here with what Ole had to say. And then we're going to see if we can bring on the one and only Big John Little. Right now, Ole says, the market is looking for something to break before it has actually broken. And it leaves the market exposed to a correction. And I'm going to take chips off the table? I don't think so, as I'm in for the long run. Right, if you're a long-term investor in silver, a long-term investor in gold, some of you aren't. Some you are you, you know, some of you like to trade back and forth and you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Me, I'm a long-term guy. Uh, like Olay, he said, I'm still wondering what may happen if the economic data starts to weaken and inflation and inflation remains bid. That means inflation remains up. That would justify gold's performance. So that's what we're hearing, right? The, okay, Susie just said we got a hundred likes. You know what, guys? Let's go back and we're gonna we haven't done this for a while. Let's do the ringer dinger. And then we're going to go check out this. Don't forget, this is new. This is big. And we're going to talk to the man behind it all, Mr. John Little, silverwars.org. But first, let's go and let's ring as a sign of thank you. Let's ring the pinger. What's this called? Sound money? I think it's called the pocket pinger. Anyway, 10 times. And I proved that I, and everybody smile. I know it's Monday morning, man. It's painful. I'm in one of those painful mornings. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I can't count to ten, and I can't smile, and so can you, right? It doesn't hurt to smile, darn it. All right, guys, let's check and uh, up. Oh, I don't see him here. We're gonna we're gonna get John on here in a few minutes. I told him about fifteen. There he is. There's the man, John Little. All right, I'm going to add him to the stage. Hello, John, can you hear me? Yeah, I want to show everybody that I have been sentenced to the basement, too. Um, uh, you can see there's a mattress there when my wife is, uh, when she gets sick of hearing about me. silver and gold. Can you guys hear John? Check. Susie, can you hear John? Checking one, two, three, four. Well, one second, everybody. Checking one, two, three, four. Hold on, John. Checking one, two, three. You can? Okay, hold on one second. I'm going to unplug one, my microphone. It's okay. Do 
John, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I can hear you too. I'm having, uh, you know, the normal Ron's basement microphone problem. So we got big news this morning, John, huh? You're the, the, the silverwars.org going live. Um, tell it us. It goes what, live tomorrow, Ron. And I thank you for, and your uh, awesome subscribers. Yep. Yeah, this is big news, John. You put a lot of work into this. I know you're probably becoming one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to the, let's say, inner workings, what's really going on in the silver market. So you put this together. I'm going to run out there and pull it up on the screen for everybody to see. I sound muffled. Okay, well, I'm doing the best I can. I'm dealing with my, uh, can you still hear me, John? Yep. Okay. So we're out at silverwars.org. Why don't you kind of tell us what uh, what, what what this is and what uh, our viewers, a silver enthusiast, right, that are here in the basement, what they can expect from, from silverwars.org. Okay, great. Thanks. It's great being here. Um, this isn't just me. There's about a team of 10 of us working on this project. It's been over a year. It all started by tracing what happened during the Manhattan Project. Um and then we discovered that when um, silver was pulled out of the coins around the mid to late 60s, um, there was a lot of congressional testimony. And we found all the newspaper clippings, not web articles, but the actual newspaper clippings, old school, like microfilm, uh, showing that the silver users, uh, which was sort of a syndicate of industrial users of silver, urged Congress to remove the uh, silver from the coins because the military wouldn't have the silver it needed to build um, mostly torpedoes at that time. But then it went on to bomb shells, missiles, rockets, satellites, and other things. So um, what we've done is just with silverwars.org is we're trying to shine light on some darkness as far as data goes. So this is just a research project, sort of like WikiLeaks did. This would be sort of like for silver, our WikiLeaks. And every single day, we're going to upload a new data dump. We're starting under the water. So it'll be silver by sea, then silver in space, silver through the skies, and then silver uh, by land. So sort of like that old one if by land, two if by sea, the old Paul Revere quote. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for having me on. Um, yeah. What questions do you think we should answer today? Well, you know, it, it, I'm going to scroll down here, this the website, and kind of show there who we are exposing the injustices plaguing the silver market. I just want to read this. I think it's key, key to what you're doing. We're dedicated to uncovering silver market manipulation and malfeasance by the United States Treasury and the Department of defense, which could threaten national security. Uh, that's a that's a pretty strong statement there, huh, John? Well, the idea is that these are just like recently we saw, and let's who cares if it's Biden or Trump or Clinton or Obama? It doesn't matter. It's the Uniparty. They make decisions to drain the petroleum reserves. We know that's been happening. But what happens if we ever do get in a wartime environment? We're not, you know, so. The same thing happened with silver. Um, and you got to remember, United States is 79% import reliant on silver. We get it all from Mexico and some from Peru. So all we did was put together a timeline, Ron. So you can scroll down the timeline and see some of the sort of uh, landmark decisions that were made. Some are in the congressional record. Some are not. So it's sort of up to the user, just like you would navigate any research project to do be do your own due diligence. Ron, how many times have I heard you tell your uh, <laughs> readers, subscribers, viewers, followers to do their own due diligence, right? So yeah. we're making it a little easier, but we think um, by starting with uh, torpedoes and then to submarines and then on uh, other vehicles that are underwater, um, will then uh, pivot to space where that's the most silver use. But we, we wow. wanted people to get their feet wet. That's why we're starting silver by sea first. So mm -hmm. 
do you, do you plan on eventually maybe even looking into like the manipulation that's gone on at the COMEX and the LBMA? Sure. Well? Yeah, we have new data on that. It's basically Craig Hemke of TF Metals did a wonderful article that hardly anyone noticed. It was about a year ago today. He found a WikiLeaks article where um, gold futures and silver futures were sort of established intentionally to introduce volatility to the market. And when you mm -hmm. introduce a lot of volatility to the market, you start demoralizing silver investors. They cannot, our weak, and I'll and count myself, my weak little hands just can't take that sort of stress right. versus the diamond hands we're supposed to all pledge that we'll have. So we're discovering that COMEX vaults and LBMA and all of those, that sort of intentional manipulation um, is now being disrupted by the Chinese citizens and they listen to their government. You got to remember China property market just uh, crashed, so did real estate. So those people believe they would listen to their government and their government's been telling them to stack gold. Now they switch to silver, knowing that that's the weakness in the West. So they can bring this sort of um, manipulation to an end uh, one, one ounce at a time, just like you teach your people, Ron. Yeah. Hey, John, I'm going to pull up that article that you wrote. I want to emphasize to everybody, John has worked on this the silverwars.org website along with a team of, of other people. Uh, and our hat goes off to everyone who's contributed to the silverwars.org website. And it'll be up later in the week, I believe. Is that correct, it should John? should be up by uh, midday tomorrow. Midday Perhaps tomorrow. Wednesday at the latest. But John also works, and, and, it, and I have a link. It's always in the description of every one of my videos, but he's, he's very active publishing on a daily basis. Uh, great articles about usually silver, but oftentimes gold as well. And I'm going to bring you to one of John's uh, sub stacks here, see if I can get this right this time. All right, here it is. Here we go. The Silver Academy. You're responsible for this, correct, John? Yeah, I wrote this one just a couple of days ago. And now it's uh, it's trending on silverseek.com and 321 Gold and a couple of other national publications picked it this, up. So This is big news about silver, right? I, I, when I read this, this is why I love getting the daily email from you, because there's always something very interesting um, you know, you work very hard every day to get great information out there. I thought this was probably so far for the year, one of the most exciting things I read about silver. You want to walk people through what you uh, what you learned here? Sure. Yeah. If you could just scroll down just a little bit so I can again, I do about two articles a day. So it gets yeah. tough. But I re this is just math. So if they have uh, one point four million people, U.S. has about three hundred thirty million. So they're three times larger. Um, now, you got to remember that in the West, we're so distracted with, you know, Twitter and Netflix and other things. You got to remember China has just seen their real estate market crash um, as well as their stock market crash. They don't believe in credit card debt like the U.S. consumer does or overconsumption. So really throughout their legacy, it's in their DNA to stack silver and gold. Mm -hmm. So the word on the streets, and some of this is anecdotal, but we also have some reporters that um, tune into their big social media. Uh, I forgot the name of TikTok in Chinese, but it's like Dion Yang or starts with a D. And then yeah. they've got Tencent and WeChat and just like five other social medias that are much bigger than our Twitter. And so the message is China knows that the weakness right now with the United States is that the dollar is really only prop. We've lost gold backing. We just lost Saudi oil backing. So the only thing propping it up is the military. So now they're doubling down and trying to stick it to the riggers um, because China figured out that they can buy a lot more oil through gold trading outside the U.S. dollar than they could before using the dollar through markets in London and, and uh, New York. So they want to really, they, so every time gold goes up, they can buy more oil. So that's really the key. And now that gold has left the station, um, yeah. silver always follows gold. 
So now they've switched the playbook from, okay, Gen Z. And you everybody can do a, uh, a Google search right now on Gen Z stacking gold in uh, China, one bean at a time, one gram at a time, which buys you one barrel of oil. You can't strap a barrel of oil on your back. So you might as well grab that. You know, you could put a whole tanker full of oil in a shoebox. Yeah. You know, think right. of it that way. Why wouldn't yeah. you do that if you can at these prices? So this is why we're seeing you uh, silver take off because one the 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 price is being set in Shanghai now. And Pierre mm -hmm. Lasson, who's probably the biggest expert in gold and silver, in my opinion, him and guys like Frank Chustra and Eric Sprott, they they've watched this forever. They know that it's now being set in Shanghai and not by the Comax. We don't even think there's much metal there. You know, yeah. what do you think, Ron? I don't. Yeah, I don't no, it's, well, it seems like to me, and I'm hearing this, I'm observing it. And I think our, our viewer who's joining us is observing this as well, that all the, it's not just silver and gold. I'm hearing even copper and other like elements right. that everything's going to China, that they're, that they're like throwing, you know, piles of U.S. dollars back to us in saying, hey, we'll take your gold, we'll take your silver. And I think with the silver situation, I, you know, from what I, I'm not in China, I've never been to China, but the reports that I'm hearing are, are, indicate that the Chinese people have gone absolutely crazy over gold, right? These reports of just nor like the Chinese government, the Chinese citizens have gone crazy over gold. And it looks like now, the government's like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. We need you need to leave some gold for us, citizens. Now that the now it appears that the government may be trying to shift some of that demand to silver. I want to read this this tweet that you had. I believe this was a tweet from BJW in your article, um, and he says, "My wife is in China. She speaks and reads fluent Mandarin." She told me last night that Chinese media is writing articles and recommending silver as a better investment as gold gets more expensive. I mean, what is that telling us? Yeah, it's the same thing that you tell your um, followers, subscribers, and viewers every day, right? I mean, you yeah. do both. Right. But, you know, we always learn that gold was the sort of metal for kings and silver is the metal for the common people. And yeah. I... Sorry, I'm in the comment. I'm not a king. I'm here in the basement. I'm not You're King Ron's John. Basement. You're what? King John. King yeah. John. <laughs> the benevolent little king. Go to the bottom of that article, Ron, and just show the 800,000 people that lined up. No, I, didn't, I didn't. I don't know you had the picture on there. That's funny. This is anyone who shorted silver after May of 2021, officially underwater. The, the This is the oriental ghost who frequently, I don't know if it's daily, but at least frequently publishes uh, data, right, from the Shanghai Gold Exchange and the Shanghai Futures Exchange. And we're yeah, seeing so. silver uh, closing above $30. I think it was even 31, hit 32 during that you know, little run up we had last. I mean, the price of silver in Shanghai, whether the futures or the gold exchange, seems to be 2 to $3 an ounce higher on a pretty regular basis. Are you, is that what you're seeing, John? Yeah, and that's the strategy. The, the It's what we call arbitrage. If you buy jeans at a thrift store for 10 bucks, you can sell yeah. them online for 100 in some cases. Or go to Europe, it'll pay for your trip. You yeah. know, pack your suitcase of jeans. Just yeah. tell yeah. the government they're your own and you're not reselling them. I mean, look at the fervor there. Can you imagine if that took off in the United States? But right now, the youth is too, you know, distracted. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to say something. You said this earlier. You pointed out that the Chinese population is 1.4 billion people. In the United States, we got about 300. Their population is, I don't know, three or four times, <clears throat> somewhere in between there, between that United States. But I would say that their interest in silver, their interest in gold amongst that population may be three times bigger, but their interest in silver and gold to me is like 30 times more. I mean, you know, maybe here you get 3% of the population that has some level of interest in silver or gold. And I think over there, it's pretty easy to say that it seems like what I hear is like 90% of people. It's the, it's the inverse of, of what we have here in the United States. 
Very good, Ron. And you got to remember that, yeah, there's that shot right there, 800,000 yeah. people. Now I, saw, I keep looking for you in that crowd, John. I think yeah. I see you in the upper right corner there. They're carrying you, you know, above the crowd, King John. <laughs> well, I'm about the right height. I'm five foot five on a good day. So, I mean, perfectly, <laughs> you know, I could easily, a guy like you, Ron, you're pretty, uh, when I mean big, I mean stealth big, not, you're not yeah, over right. No, I'd like be me, I would, but look at the, at the very end there, I think it explains why they're doing it. What, the whole strategy for um, China mm -hmm. is basically, there should be a chart saying that it okay. checks three boxes. Go down per, there. Right yeah. there, those three checks. By doing this, first of all, they're, they can obtain more oil than they could just you know six months ago. That's a pretty big deal to be mm -hmm. able to obtain more oil. So now the London ETF tonnage is drained, check. LBMA yep. tonnage drained, check. And now that it's set in China instead of London, yeah. um, where it has been for the past 50 or 60 years, they're in control of their own energy destiny. Check. So this is a big move. Um, this is much bigger than, I mean, I work with the Reddit apes, but the silver squeeze with Reddit's nothing compared to what I see going on here. This is the real squeeze, in my opinion. No yeah. disrespect to the American apes, but I'm just putting the numbers to it. And like you said, they're 30 times more, uh, let's say, feverishly stacking. Is that fair to say? <laughs> yeah, I think that's a, that's an accurate statement. You know, I, I had dinner back in October with a, uh, so get this right, a Canadian banking executive who's very in tune with kind of what's going on in the world, but also with what's going on within gold and silver. And he explained to me back then, he was like, the, 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 the Chinese are buying oil for gold right now that goes exactly along you know and it's really simple it's really simple he said basically let's say saudi arabia wants to sell oil to china for gold they sell they sell the oil to china for yuan right on their whatever exchange when they and they so they the the, the saudis get paid with chinese yuan but then they're able to immediately convert that yuan to gold on the shanghai gold exchange he said, you know, there's one little step, but for all intents and purpose, they are buy, they are selling and buying, you know, gold is, uh, and oil are being exchanged uh, between China and a number of other countries right now. That's what I got for you today, Ron. You're, you're just an angel from heaven to let me even talk about this website. We do think, um, we'll give you a shout out on it as soon as okay. possible, um, yeah. because you're, you know, you do the YouTube broadcasts as, as well as anyone. You stay tough, you stay consistent, and your subscribers are the best, and they're very educated. I've learned a lot from checking out the comments in your yeah. um So thanks yeah. for letting well, me in today. Yeah, well, John, it's been our pleasure. And I want to reiterate to everyone, uh, go check out John's Substack. There is a link in the description of this and every video that I put out because I really believe that John – is genuinely uh, interested in furthering uh, the, the the cause for silver and gold. So we appreciate everything you're doing, John. And I get to share a lot of the information that you come up with. You know, I'm not going to say every single day, but at least once or twice a week, I'm talking about something that I learned from you. So uh, we appreciate you and uh, thank you on behalf of all of our viewers. Thank you for being here. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Okay. All right. Stay awesome. Thank All you right. so much. Later. See you, See you buddy. Bye-bye. All right, guys, there we have it. I'm going to try to plug in my microphone again. We're going to do a little technical. Let's see. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Susie, if you can't hear me, please let me know. I'm going to go on, but, uh, we're getting mainstream media attempting to bash down gold? Hmm. What? You sound good. I sound good. Okay. I don't know what's going on when I'm bringing guests on now. You know, I do, we do the best we can here in the basement, uh, running on a shoestring budget. <laughs> Nonetheless, what is what 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 is Bloomberg? I didn't like this article. I don't think you're going to like it either. But I think it's really interesting when we analyze 
what they're actually saying about why people are selling gold. We just heard about how Chinese people, the whole world is buying silver and gold. They're, they're, they're thankfully taking all of our silver and gold. What are these people thinking? And what is Bloomberg saying that got me a little worked up, okay? A Brooklyn pawn shop. Hmm, very interesting. At a Brooklyn pawn shop, customers are flooding in to sell gold. Let's read this. We're going to go through a couple quick highlights. Uh, investors and metal traders can't agree on what exactly is behind gold's recent rally. At King Gold Pawn in Brooklyn, the customers don't care. They just want to sell. And hey, while I have your attention, guys, let's say thank you to channel sponsor Pinbex because you don't want to sell. You want to buy gold, silver, platinum. You want to do yourself a favor and check out Pinbex. P-I-M-B-E-X. Pinbex.com, fun to spell, fun to say, save, fun to get more metal for your money. And that's what you'll find, right? I won't tell you what to do, but I would say you may benefit from checking out Pinbex next time you're in the market for gold, silver, or platinum. Their prices are always ultra competitive. The box comes to you wrapped up like Fort Knox. Okay. They have all the same products that all the other big online bullion dealers have and they have great customer service. Read the reviews, but find out for yourself. But let's see what's going on at this Brooklyn pawn shop where people are selling gold, okay? Uh, it says here, for some, the sky-high values mean it's a good time to cash in. It's hard to ignore record prices that climb above $2,400 an ounce last week. For others, it's a more desperate move to get money for bills and rent. Whatever they need, what's clear is jewelers and pawn shops are seeing a flood of sellers, okay? Quote, people are using gold as an ATM they never had, said Gene Furman, owner of King Gold and Pawn and Empire Gold Buyers. At Furman's Fifth Avenue store, the number of people coming in selling and pawning gold jewelry is more than three times above normal levels since prices started to rally in late February. OK, uh, I, what I want to point out here, which I think is very important for us to remember, is these aren't stackers. OK, think about that. These aren't this is not you. This is not me. This is not basement dwellers that are rushing to sell their gold. These are people that, number one, are desperate for money. Pretty much what this article said. And num number two, uh, they're not stackers. <laughs> I had another number too, but I forgot what it was. When it comes back to me, I'll remember, okay? Uh, it's jewelry. I'm sorry. These are people that are scrapping jewelry. That's number two. They're desperate for money and they're scrapping jewelry, okay? Uh, this guy says here, Brandon Sabino, a 30-year-old IT specialist who sold a gold necklace and a gold ring last week. He said, quote, probably broke up with his girlfriend or something, but nonetheless, he said, quote, prices are high and I need cash. He said, adding that with the cost of rent, groceries, and car insurance rising, he doesn't have any savings. Okay, mic drop. So Bloomberg puts out, well, I won't say it's an article bashing gold, but oh, everybody's selling their gold. Everybody's selling their gold. No, why don't they put out an article that says, thanks to Bidenomics, desperate Americans are cashing in their scrap gold jewelry just to pay their rent, just to be able to go to Starbucks or just to be able to buy, buy some food. That's the reality of what we're saying, seeing here. They do go on to say here, investors typically seek safety in gold for fear of political, economic, and financial crisis, escalating tensions in the Middle East, a war in Ukraine, and an upcoming U.S. election. Boy, we, yeah, no, thanks a lot. See, it's not just me that's doom and gloom are now underlining its traditional role as a haven asset once again. Hey, guys, let's run out real quick. It's been crazy this morning in the gold and silver market. I'm afraid to look. Silver! Hey, silver. Hold on, basement dweller. 750, thank you for being here. Please give this a thumbs up. That really helps the channel, helps the algorithm. Subscribing is free if you're a new, new right? We call each other basement dwellers for fun when we're here. You don't have to call yourself a basement dweller, but you're always, bell, I got to ring the cowbell. Okay, I'm going to do that in one second. But guys, breaking news, breaking good news for silver investors. I'm checking right now. 
And the spot price of silver is up 70 cents, two and a half percent, $28 and 55 cents. I'm telling you, silver is, if we can stay above $28 on so many levels, that's a good thing. I'm going to talk about that, but let's ring the cowbell first. Huh? 750 basement dwellers, this is for you. We got 200 thumbs up. I'm going to ring it away from the microphone. All right, guys. Hey, isn't John Little just the best? I'm telling you, this guy and this silverwars.org website, I believe, uh, you know, he, he was very diplomatic on how he described it. But what they're going to bring out are some really groundbreaking stories about silver. There's always been questions about the data that we got from the silver markets in the past. Like John said, right? Do your own due diligence. Read what he says. Read what all the different sources say. Come up with your own thesis as to what it looks like for the silver and gold market. But to me, uh, things are looking very, very optimistic. All right. Um, I hope I'm wrong. I needed to say I'm sorry because last night I preached to you guys that I thought this week we could see a difficult time in the silver and gold market. The markets were up this morning. Gold was back down. Let's take a look at gold. I'm sorry. I should have. I, we need to look at gold. We know silver now up 67 cents, 69 cents. That's funny. It always changes, doesn't it? Gold up $5, right? 23.47 per ounce. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's go talk about. Let's talk about kind of the head stories here. This is interesting that CNBC is uh, CNBC, okay, is publishing this article, Prelude to World War III, World Leaders React to Iran's Air Attack Against Israel. We don't know how this is going to play out, right? Basically, uh, Israel attacked Iran, and then Iran, obviously, you know the whole story, Saturday night launched 300 uh, drones or missiles, and they were all shot down. With the help of the United States, with the help of the United Kingdom, with the help of, I think, France as well. My question is this, right? And I hate war. And I want to remind you that when we're talking about this, I we are not rooting for war. We're talking about human lives that are uh, on the line here all over the world. But nonetheless, we aren't going to stick our head in the sand. We're going to see what's going on. And what's going on is, yeah, now Iran attacks back. In the United States and the UK are all helping. I can't, I mean, for all intents and purposes, <laughs> doesn't that mean that we're involved in a war with Iran? Is that why world leaders are saying World War Three? You know, gold and silver are the absolute, I don't care what anyone says, the absolute safe haven ap uh, asset during times of massive geopolitical upheaval. Let's just read what, um, let's just read what, you know, all this. There was um, an interesting comment from the president of, uh, yeah, Colombia. Listen to this. All right. Look, this is not political. I'm not agreeing, disagreeing, but look at what he said. In South America, Colombia's president, Gustavo Petro, called on the United Nations to, quote, meet urgently and, quote, immediately commit to peace, quote. He said, it was predictable. We, we are now in the prelude of World War III, precisely when humanity should rebuild its economy towards the rapid goal of decarbonization. He said, quote, the support of the U.S. in practice for a genocide has ignited the world. These are strong words. I'm just telling you what he said. Everyone knows how wars start. That This is scary. Everyone knows how wars, wars start. No one knows how they end. And there he is there, okay? Uh, we got a different perspective from Argentina. Javier Millet said uh, his office expressed its, quote, solidarity and unwavering commitment to Israel after the attacks by Iran. The Republic of Argentina recognizes the right of state nations to defend themselves and strongly supports the state of Israel in the defense of its sovereignty, in particular against regimes that promote terror 
and seek the destruction of Western civilization. Wow. I mean, this is just, then we got the European leaders chiming in. Uh, let's see here. I condemn in the strongest terms an unprecedented attack launched by Iran against Israel, which threatens to destabilize the region. Pre uh, French President Emmanuel Macron said on Sunday, uh, he said that on X, France is working on de-escalation with its partners and calls for, for restraint. There's all types of perspectives on what's going on over there. All that we do know is, uh, guys, as, as, as individuals, you know, you want to protect yourself. You want to protect your family. Absolutely. Right. Um, all that we do know is that it is not a good situation. And up to this point, all that we have seen is escalation. Okay. We don't want this to be going on, but we need to be aware of what is happening in the world. While at the same time, we have escalation in the situation in the Ukraine. We have a war in Europe and a war in the Middle East. Do you think it's smart to protect some of your assets with silver and gold? I think it is. No doubt about it. Let's go see what else is going on on CNBC real quickly. The top business news. Maybe we can get a good laugh here. <laughs> there was something on here earlier uh, that had me laughing. Oh, Tesla is laying off 10% of its workforce. That's the big headline news. Retail sales jump by 0.7% in March, much higher than expected. Do we believe the data we get from our government? Uh, I'll leave that up to you to answer. Trump's stock is going down. Uh, there was something down here that I thought was super interesting. And it's probably gone now. Prelude to World War III. We just saw that one. All right, guys, uh, that's all I got for you today. I want to say thank you for being here, all 700 of you. How about, how about the gong real quick? Oh, okay, we got 300 thumbs up. I got to ring the gong. The golden gong. Here it comes, Susie. Thank you, Susie, for alerting me. The golden gong for 300 thumbs up. I'm always fascinated how it continues to ring after I ring that darn thing. Uh, I plan on being back tomorrow, guys. It's going to be interesting to see. Let's just do a, one more quick update. We still have gold up about $5. Come on, silver. Silver's up 69 cents <laughs> per ounce. Thank you to the moderators for being here. Thank you to Susie. Thank you for being part of the basement. Uh, let's get excited. We're going to get this new website up and launched officially this week, silverwars.org. Thanks to John Little for joining us. Most important, thank you for joining us. You are part of the basement crew, part of the basement dwellers, right? We hang out together. We love to talk about silver and gold. And I'm going to look forward to seeing you next time.